Welcome to the Thieves' Den, where you can learn whether or not there is actually honor among thieves. I will be the master of ceremonies for this evening and the chief amongst thieves. I am Lance Hodge. I am one of the members of Goodman Games. If it's your first time watching, you'll know that I run many of the games for us, do a lot of play testing. I do some of the artwork, um, grunt work. Love to hang out with these guys and spread the good news of gaming honors. Um, Martin, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, hey, Lance. For a second, I thought you'd sort of left us and gone to work for Goodman, which I would not blame you, but you'd be missed. Um, so yes, I'm glad you're, you're sticking with gaming honors. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Martin Bunicky, and I do a lot of the writing for gaming honors. And uh, I try and coordinate some of the social media. If you're on Facebook, you'll see me. But if you're on Instagram or Twitter, you'll see my sister, Meredith, who's also rocking the chat room right now. So thank you, Meredith. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Yes, you're right there, Martin. I don't have any standing offers from uh, Mr. Goodman <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> I, I'm a Road Reaver judge, so I do a lot of Road Reavering for Goodman, too, for those of you that don't know. Um, but yes, I'm a member of the Gaming Honors team. Thad, tell us about you. Yeah, my name's Thad Donovan. I'm so excited for our third episode here on the Goodman Twitch channel. We're going to kill it. And uh, I do the graphic design for the modules for the website to do the video production work as we put out new products and, and promote the company. And it's a, a lot of fun working with Goodman on, on all these products. And just one little thing before we move on. Last week, I didn't make the roll the body check and my and I, I didn't make it through the night so I, so I was dead but I'm gonna use my hero pin to jump back to green because I'm fully healthy and ready to rock it tonight so well hopefully this evening we're gonna use a little bit of a different mechanic to, uh, since we've each died in each episode that's really kind of a downer so we're gonna try something different tonight we're gonna be rolling a lot of dice and Thad uh, also don't viewers don't let Thad sell himself short he's also uh one of the supporting artists and a co uh, author and co-author editor. He does a lot, um, not only technically, but creatively. So both we all wear a lot of hats. And so, yep. and we, of course, we can't forget Andrea, our great CEO, keeping things running in the background. Yes, she's behind the scenes, indeed. All right, gentlemen, the first thing that we're going to do tonight, uh, we're going to roll more dice this evening. And I would like you to each get three six-siders. Um, whatever character you're playing this evening, let's see what your luck stat will be to start. I'm sure this is not like me, so I'll be really lucky. 12. Yeah, me oh. too. Same here. Wow. Oh, okay. It's so what's that? Bat. Up one? Is that a, a one bonus there? Let's call it a one. Very nice. It's going to be a battle royale. I see we're starting out uh, on even, even keel here, as it were, speaking in nautical terms. Martin, tell us uh, about a recent character you've been playing. Yeah, so one of the characters that I've really surprisingly had a blast playing is Haragrin the Amazing. And he is a bard in the Blackmore campaign that Thad ran all through the pandemic. I think for almost two years, we played a week in and week out all online. I mean, we started in person and then everything shifted. And Hargren the, uh, the Amazing is a magician who's learned to sort of, you know, as a spellcaster who's learned how to hide his magic in many ways. And he plays a lute, he plays a mean lute. And uh, he's been a lot of fun. He takes that loot out and he just keeps on blowing. That's right. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm going to see if I can throw a temporary luck bonus point your way. Since you're a bard, give me a ballad. Give me a speech. Uh, you know, mesmerize this crowd. Do something for us. Yeah, I'm ready. So um, one of the things I just should, I should say this about Hargrant. So um, I like to write songs that sort of tell the stories of what's happening. And so actually, Lance, your character, Raga, was temporarily turned into a zombie for a while. And that made it very hard for you to get around because you sort of stood out. So I wrote a song to try and make people not be afraid of you. And it was called The Lay of the Undead Lover. And it was this sort of romantic ballad about why women would swoon for the, um, the undead lover. So. Just, that's the backdrop for my introduction. So I'm coming into the tavern. 
Good evening, fair ladies, kind gentlemen, every uh, gentle folk and others. I am Haragrin the Amazing. I have come to astound and amaze you, confound and astound you. And I am going to do it by singing my famous piece, an original composition of my own composition. It is known as the Lay of the Undead Lover. Undead lover, he'll take your heart out, you won't feel it. He's like no other. He walks the street at night because he's undead. He's an undead lover. <laughs> what, what are you saying? Theater. Lance, you're shaking your head. Do I lose luck for that? I'm going to give you one temporary luck point for uh, making the attempt, and I'm taking away one temporary luck point for the fact that you are singing Phil Collins to me. However, Thad, you will get a temporary luck point for singing backup vocals without even being requested. I didn't even request that. You get the luck point. Wow. It was, a 13. It was Martin, such a great a performance. I'm sorry, Martin. It had to be done. I, it's a, you know, I'm going to grab those dad jokes every chance I get. An undead lover is just too close to easy lover. Can't help let's myself. Just, let's just say that I was confounded, but not astounded. So <laughs> All right. we're going to call enough. it even. Thad, <laughs> give us one of your old characters. Tell us a little bit of, about somebody. You know what? Keeping in the music tradition, uh, 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 Hargren reminded me of a character I played in uh, our special guest tonight, his campaign that we call the Armageddon campaign. And the, my character's name was, my character was also a bard, but he had an electric guitar and strapped to his back were a, like a big martial amp so he could crank out the, the tunes as he would move through the world. And the, the thing with him that was uh, fun to kind of role play was that, and sorry, I'm not going to, I'm not going to air play guitar for you. But uh, the thing with him that was interesting was that we were put into this world, this situation, this Armageddon scenario, that was very serious and very dire, but he thought it was just for a reality TV show. So he never believed that it was all real. I'd and forgotten so, that aspect. So that yeah, was kind of fun. Right. Yeah, I totally forgot that he thought it was all like Tropic Thunder or something. He ex exactly. They were being filmed. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that so was maybe that was his coping mechanism just to get through it because it's, it's pretty dark. Super fun campaign. I'm sure we'll talk about it more down the Did road. Get, was he? Uh, I don't think we got his name. Was that Johnny? Oh, six that pack? is Johnny Six Pack. Johnny Six Pack. Yes. Now, was the six pack because he liked to have a six pack at night when he got home from work, or was it because he was ripped in the torso area? Oh, he was. He was based on me, and so he was ripped. Just <laughs> total. Yeah. Fantastic. I have, a, I have a one pack. Uh, indeed. <laughs> that was absolutely fantastic. Well, um, we're on a little bit of a short time schedule this evening, and I'm going to be emceeing, so we don't need to talk about any of my numerous silly characters. I think there's something way more important to talk about. Oh, and um, Martin, before we move on, though, uh, did Meredith, so Meredith's doing the Instagram account, correct? He is. Uh, is she? So we might be doing a giveaway, or we yeah, already started it. Or? Yeah, thanks. So yeah, keep an eye on our Instagram account. We are thinking about doing a giveaway to sort of help spread the word about our Kickstarter for Chaos Before the Mast. And I know I have been talking about Meredith to Meredith about that. Could be a great chance to pick up a hero pin if you haven't had a chance to yet. Um, and you can always see some cool art there from our projects and things that we're doing. And that yep. is my segue. I scry with my little eye. Gentlemen, take it away and tell us about Chaos Before the Mast and how exciting and great that's going right now. That's you, Martin. All right, so we launched Chaos Before the Mast, which is a second level uh, DCC compatible and 5E compatible module um, on Kickstarter yesterday. And we funded in six hours, so thank you everyone. Um, we've been We've been encouraging people to check out the show tonight. And if you're one of our backers that are watching tonight, thank you so much. We are really excited. We funded in six hours. 
we hit our stretch, our first stretch goal yesterday. And so everyone is going to get a, a, a color copy of the cover art by Matt Morrow. So you can frame that, put it on your wall, which is what I'm going to do because the cover art looks amazing and captures the attack of the albatross, which is this haunted ship that uh, uh, waylays the intrepid eel, which is the ship that the party is traveling on. And we are less than, I think we are less than $400 away from our next stretch goal, uh, which is a tracking sheet that Thad is going to design uh, for crew points. Because what, Thad, you want to talk a little bit about crew points? Because you've had a chance to earn a couple playing the game. You remember, what about crew points? Uh, remind <laughs> me about crew points. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you a little bit about crew points. So if you, if your character is really good about being a sailor, so you do a great job swabbing the deck, or you're good at telling tall tales, or you're good at sort of having a, you know, having a throwdown with one of the other sailors, the judge or the GM can decide to award you a crew point. And you don't know that as a player. It's just something the judge does behind the screen. And so you track the crew points that people earn throughout the adventure or lose. If you decide you're not going to swab the decks, well, you're not going to get that crew point. And if you earn enough crew points, you get late in the adventure a tattoo. And Elena, we sent you a, uh, an image if you could pull it up. We have a decal. Yeah, so the decal um, is of the tattoo and you can actually give it out during the game uh, to the members of the crew uh, or the adventuring party that become members of the crew and they can wear it or put it on their book bag and be a member of the Intrepid Eel with pride. In the one of the play test uh, games that we're doing right now, uh, we've got a couple of people that specifically wanted no part of being part of the crew and said, I paid for this passage, you know? I didn't, uh, what do you mean I gotta work? Yeah, this is all part of the job. Uh, I'm just, you know, I was expecting some fine meals and potentially like a back rub, a couple's back rub on the deck. Is there a spa treatment? And, you know, do I have to pay extra for the fishing expedition and that kind of thing? So it was really interesting because a couple of the people were like, nope, don't want to be part of this crew. So it, it sets itself up nicely. Um, but the, the tattoo comes with some boons as well, uh, in-game boons that can be taken from adventure to adventure. So I think it's awesome. You know, what's really cool about this module is that it's really heavy on the RP side. And don't worry for all the people that like uh, to get in a good skirmish. There's plenty of uh, fights to deal with as well. But there's singing songs. There's, uh, you know, having, a, you know, uh, arguments with the crew. There's all kinds of scenarios where you can really kind of go deep in the RP side and, you know, tell an old, an old uh, you know, uh, fish story. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of fun. And we've been enjoying seeing people come up with some really clever RP moments. Well, thinking so, on the fly, gentlemen, I, I just I had vanished. a great idea. So, you know, Goodman, uh, every year we have the Halloween module, and then he commissions a Valentine's Day module, and there's a Christmas module. So we clearly have to have Gaming Honors holiday uh, next year on Talk Like a Pirate Day. And everyone on Talk Like a Pirate Day should be playing Chaos Before the Mast. I think it should be a tradition. I love it. Let's uh, put it on the calendar. <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah. Um, Check it out on the Kickstarter. Uh, please support us uh, if you if you feel um, so inclined, and it's a fantastic adventure. Now we have. Uh, I told you we're going to be rolling some more dice this week, and we are going to roll some more dice. And right now, we're going to keep it totally random, and I'm going to roll one of these crazy funky dice, a sixteener. So. Our 16er is picking our next subject matter for this evening. That's a four to score, gentlemen, which okay. means. Is that how to handle absent PCs? Yep. How? Okay. I think this just came up recently. When you guys are running games, um, and we all know that life gets really busy, and unfortunately, we all turned into grownups with responsibilities and such. How do you two um, prefer to handle absent PCs? 
yeah, th- you know, it kind of depends, of course. Uh, sometimes you can just suggest that they're still along for the ride. Like if you're a traveling uh, party and it, it would be too weird to, ha- to leave the PC that doesn't, sh- the player that doesn't show up that night, uh, leave them back at, in the village or whatever. Um, they're just sort of there, but not there. That's, that seems to be a you know, decent way to do it. Or, um, you know, a lot of times our characters will have little side goals. And so you can just say, well, they're, they're working on their little side quest. They're doing some research. They're doing some exploring. We'll meet up with them at the, at the river. Um, those are a couple ways. And then, then it gets into, okay, if they don't show up, uh, do they get the experience points? If you're a, a system that uses experience points, well, yeah, then you're going to be left a little bit behind on that. Sometimes uh, it's a system where just the way the judge plays, they don't necessarily use experience points. It's more just by milestones or you know different scenes or different uh, l- levels, uh, different scenarios. Um, but those are a couple of ways that I do it. What, what about you guys? Martin, how about you? Yeah, so am I back? I was in the middle of talking and then suddenly my Zoom vanished and I just kept talking. I had a fascinating monologue that you all missed. Hopefully we can pick that up sometime in off, you know, blooper reel. Uh, Yeah, so how do I handle absent PCs? Um, I think that Thad really covered how I like to approach it. I think that it really depends on the story. So if the story is really moving along forward and it's, it doesn't make sense to have the characters drop out, we have this idea that they're just kind of present and in the background. Um, and so that maybe, maybe they're, they're indisposed or they're sort of handling. I think that one of the ways it worked out best was actually when we were doing the Chain Coffin campaign and there were, um, oh, that's right, they, they recovered bodies. Like you had found some bodies in this cave and so there was a decision that some of the characters were going to bring those bodies back to the village while the other characters continue to explore. So I kind of liked that solution because it kept the story moving forward. It made sense. And we didn't have the idea that, well, they're with you, but they're not. Um, so, I, yeah, and I agree with, with you, Thad, that I think the tough thing is experience points. Um, we've we have, you know, we, we've tended to move away from sort of exact encounter experience points, but you still, you get rewarded for showing up. And I th- yes. think that makes sense. I mean, we're all busy. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes it's unavoidable, but if you're going to, if you're going to come, it's nice that you know that you get an extra, a, a little bump up from doing that. Maybe you should incorporate some kind of punitive model where there are negative consequences when you don't show up. Some kind of public <laughs> shaming comes to mind. I don't know, something like that. Maybe in our next Twitch show, if somebody doesn't show up to our game, we can we can publicly announce that they couldn't make it. Unacceptable. Yeah, That's I think true. that I, nope. what we all need is more shaming. Yes. <laughs> more guilt, more shame. Yes, feeling inadequate. Um, in every other aspect of life, you know, like, oh, failing at my job. Now I'm failing at my hobby as well. Uh, I'm not sure that's it's- good. And I think all of us on this show tonight, except for Randy, when we're, when Randy teleports in, but everyone on the show tonight is old enough to have been playing where there was some shaming connected to gaming. It wasn't always the cool and hip hobby it is now. Right. Yeah, you didn't want to be uh, wearing your uh, Dungeons and Dragons Tiamat t-shirt to sixth grade unless you wanted to take a beating back in the day, I kind of remember. And I'm sure that Randy's somewhere around here because I'm pretty sure that that's what happened to you. He must have dimension doored you off the Zoom screen or something. You know, oh, that's a good point. He's lurking. So I, a couple of things. It's very uh, learning these online platforms, even though it was under horrible circumstances that forced us all into this, actually had a, you know, there was a benefit to it because sometimes you can't make the drive, take up the whole night um, and be present at a game. That's a big commitment, even though clearly that's the best way to do it, to get together with people and your friends. I mean, in person is the best way. Share dinner, share some libations. Great. But with all of the technology that we were forced to learn, it makes it easier for people not to have to miss, which I think is fantastic. And even they can, people come in late or leave early, but they can come and get part of the game in just because they can do it from their own home. So I think that was a really cool benefit of, um, you know, a little silver lining in the cloud. We've even was... been, 
We've even been doing a, a hybrid where most of us can make it in person and we'll have a guest or two show up. They get their own little monitor so we can see and hear them. And that's actually worked out okay. It's, you know, it's not ideal, but it's it allows those players that are too far away to still be a part of it. Yep, I think it's been working great. And I will say this, that uh, during uh, the, um, the Blackmore campaign, the comprehensive experience spreadsheet was always <laughs> weighing on my mind. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, so in that to, one... Went to yeah. Florida with spring... You know, I had to go to spring break, and Hayden and I tried to sell the idea that we were going to actually do the game from my parents' house in Florida. Unfortunately, our significant others both said that that was not happening, and I was like, do you realize the experience that you're costing me right now? This is two weeks. Yeah, that was an example of a, 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 a campaign where we tracked pretty yeah. well the experience. And it, it was not just for fights. A lot of the experience came from role playing and from being there and participating. So it was a hit for sure. Yeah, I really I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it was it was fun. A lot of fun. We might have to, so Lance, we might have to add that as a topic on our random uh, items table for discussion. The what do we do? when uh spouses partners significant others bosses you know they don't understand our commitments <laughs> well bosses we, probation officers i mean the list goes on and on if people exactly. who might not understand our commitments so um when rob comes on later our special guest uh we'll have to ask him um what he told my fiance when uh, he realized that our wedding is scheduled for uh, Game Hole Con next year. Uh, this this year, uh, he had some interesting suggestions uh, of how she could <laughs> rectify that situation. <laughs> you got to get fun. your priorities straight. Now, is it time? Am I wrong, or is it time for our friend Randy to make an appearance? Oh, good. I think. I wait, yeah, I think. I think it is, Rand. Let's see. Yes. We're going to, we did, I, yep, so it is time for our good friend, oh, I skipped, sorry, I went out of order, Elena, I did the scry, I was so excited about Chaos Before the Mass that I scried before Randy, but now is the time that we usually bring in our one copper a week resident world's worst wizard, Randy, um, he will tell you that he is striving to be the world's greatest wizard. He's always doing something new and exciting, which is probably why pushing the boundaries of using the powers of magic that he does, why he runs into this trouble that some wizards do in Dungeon Crawl Classics. For those of you that don't know, it's very risky to pull on that power. And um, there's a huge table of corruption. And our young wizard's apprentice just got uh, freed from his master and sent out into the world, uh, earning that big one copper a week. Uh, and the first two times that he tried to help us out, um, I believe he tried charm person once. Um, I think he had tried to feather fall someone once, but uh, instead, uh, when he tried to charm person, he ended up with fish gills somehow. And when he was doing feather fall, he must have fumbled the words with the feathers because he grew a bird beak. So I think we have a drawing that we've, uh, a couple drawings. We have our pristine Randy, and now maybe you guys in the audience are seeing bird beak uh, fish gill Randy. Um, and let's bring him on and see if he can redeem himself. Randy, what do you say? Well, I uh, detest the first part of that introduction, but I guess circumstance dictates that I say, thank you for having me here. It's great to be here, uh, Randy, the world's greatest wizard. I don't know what I'm hearing from you beginning of kicking me off, but thank you for having me here as always. Long time no see, everybody. Um, I won't lie, it's been difficult to learn to casually communicate with people with a bird beak. They don't seem to really want to talk to you when you just come up and accidentally start right in their face. It's friendly, I guarantee everyone, but they never believe me. <laughs> well, it's good anyway. having you back, Randy. I think you're due. I feel like you are going to really wow us today. Thank you, Thad. I, I hope that I will. And, you know, I've been thinking lately very critically about what's been happening to me. And I think that 
this corruption that's been befalling me as I try to carry off these spells is just showing me what my true calling is, right? If I'm going to be turning into these creatures and getting little aspects of them, I got to go all in. I got to become the most powerful, super awesome creature that I can possibly be. And so tonight, there's an advanced spell that some very higher level wizards who I'm totally on par with call Polymorph. And you can oh, use Polymorph yeah. to transform into any kind of magnificent monster. And I thought, what would show your audience better that I really know how to turn myself into a powerful key creature than transforming into a dragon? Oh. So I think yes. that oh. I've been practicing since our last meeting, going over the incantation day by day in my spell book. I'm ready. I'm ready, guys. Want to give me a shot? Absolutely. First, if I yeah. can make it. If I could make a side bet with Hargren, I got five gold on he's he's going to make it. He's going to be the red dragon. Thank you, Fab. Yeah, I I really like to you know it's hard for me to take that back because I really believe in Randy. I, I okay. you know like I I I've got Randy's yeah, uh, but I will say okay five gold that he makes a red dragon. Uh, I'll say you know I'll take that and I say he's going to become a um a Scottish terrier. That's still pretty good. Sorry, Randy, but I think I'm th I'm, th I'm feeling Scottish terrier. Okay, for a luck point, gentlemen, just in case this spell goes wrong, um, Martin, what do you think might happen? His head swells, he gets short, he oh, turns I blue. Pick, I'll see which one of you comes closest to what actually happens, just in case this goes bad. Yeah, thank you. For a luck point, I think that his yep. corruption w will be... He is going to grow a vestigial arm. Okay, you're going not sure where arm. not not sure where it's going to happen. It could be in more useful places or not, but I think vestigial arm. Okay, we'll go with that. What do you think, uh, Thad? I'm thinking hobbit feet, big okay. old oversized hairy hobbit feet. Okay, if we get a vestigial arm or if we get some foot action, we'll know who's going to get this fantastic Lankmar oh. luck point. It, oh, oh my! It's the cat. Sorry, that that does that definitely wasn't me getting uh, nervous from all of these horrendous suggestions of what might happen to me if I. No, it won't happen. You'll be fine. Obviously, yeah, I'm uh, I'm Randy. Dragon, terrier, uh, hobbit feet, or vestigial arm. We're thinking, but I know that it's going to be dragon. Okay. So okay. without further ado, I feel You're the power. Really dragging this out. Come on. I feel the power. Why don't I feel the power? <laughs> oh, well, um, I feel myself mismuttering the incantation in the heat of the moment. I, I feel awash with a strange sensation. And, ah, uh, oh, no. Martin, what have you done? What have you done? <laughs> I, well, it seems that in my moment of panic, I may have accidentally leaned in too hard to that thought of the Scottish Terrier. And now it would seem that my left leg has overgrown with fur. My foot has morphed, shrunk, extended, and mutated into a, into a dog's paw. So it's almost as if I have some kind of werewolfian left leg. Oh, well. Well, this that's so awesome because that is very close. That That is as close as it gets to Hobbit foot. All right, Thad, oh. you get the Lankmar point. You're up to 14 oh. on your luck now. Oh, wonderful. Wow. But it pains not, me to see our, our... your evening tonight, Martin. I am sorry. No, I guess not. Well, Randy, I mean... Um, wow. Which leg we got? Left or right, Randy? Left, The left leg. The left leg is is hairy it's muscular it has claws on it the foot was that was that your punting leg <laughs> i am not obligated to answer that question i was only obligated to give you my magic martin Fair don't enough. worry if if you need I'm, to I'm learn sorry. to fight you can always do miyagi do karate get up on one leg and you know it'll be fine in my heart, Randy, you are still the world's greatest wizard. I don't care what everyone else says. Literally yeah. everyone else. Near, far, wherever you are. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that, guys. You know, I think that 
far down the road here, I, I will I will know what to turn this into. I will become a whole new kind of creature, the Randy. Everyone will respect and love and fear me. I hope. Well, you've certainly earned this copper. So here you are. That's one copper. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lance. I uh, I better go figure out how to walk, run, and live with this. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to. <laughs> Best of luck. Farewell, Randy. Oh. Farewell, thieves. Thanks again. See you next time. See you, Randy. Why am I having visions of Randy lifting that dog leg uh, every once in a while when we're out on the trail, you know? Like, come on, Randy. Well, he, so we always know where he, he always knows where he lives, can find his way home. Marking his territory. Oh, I think you made him mad. Yeah. He froze you there for a second again. Uh oh. Yeah, You're it's, a, right. it's, a, You're it's back this with is us. like a new episode of Teen Wolf. Well, that's like residual magic from Randy. He's got such powerful magic that you know when he when he pops out there, it, there's like waves that go through. Oh, it's I, now time. Oh yes. Before you go, I want credit for my Teen Wolf joke. Oh. I just instinctively dismissed it. Ah. I thought I, I thought maybe it got cut out, and so that I didn't get the luck point you wanted to give me for referencing Teen Wolf. Um, uh, really what, snubbed I, I by it. what was the Teen snubbed, Wolf? snubbed by the Oscars? Snubbed uh, what, by the what, Oscars. What was the Teen Wolf reference? I missed Randy. It. Oh, I'm gonna have to say that that is so obscure and so up my alley that you are going to get a temporary luck point. <laughs> So you're up to 13. Any Teen Wolf rep, you know, Michael J. Fox, genius. And snubbed by the Oscars. Totally unfair. And friends, that's how you get a pity luck point. There you go. There you go. Well, speaking of fantastic individuals like Mr. Michael J. Fox, we have a guest with us that's <laughs> agreed to come on the show and to try and be a peasant. Um, he has a lot of practice at it over the years the college days, going to grad school, eating ramen and potatoes for every meal, Mr. Rob the Peasant. Yeah. Hi, fellas. How you hey, doing, Rob. Rob? It's good to see you. You too. Thanks for joining us. Oh, you bet. That, so, could uh, be, that could be the first time I've heard you compare it to Michael J. Fox. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm, yeah. yeah, you're both really good, solid um, Republicans that studied economics and <laughs> focused your entire life on making money. Boy, that's going way back in his uh, in, in his bibliography. <laughs> yeah. Teen Wolf. Oh. Hey, what about Mar Marty McFly? Oh, McFly. Yeah, that was the stuff. His uh, his time travel movies is where I really love. He really shined. Speaking of that, I just watched um, The Professor the other night in playing the father in the movie Nobody. Have you guys had the opportunity yet? Mm. Oh, my goodness. What a fantastic show. Yeah, the doc. The doc makes an appearance in that flick. But we have business to attend to, and we have to keep it rolling tonight. We've got a fantastic show following us, uh, so we're on a time schedule. Rob, do you know the – so what we do here is – I'm going to roll on the occupation table in the uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics rule book. And for those of you using the regular rule book at home, we're talking page 22. And I have got this gigantic 100 sided dice, which also functions as a home defense mechanism because it weighs about as much as a small bowling ball. I'm going to roll this baby. Be rolling and for I've about 20 minutes. Yeah, that thing could take weeks to stop. <laughs> yeah, I I'm going to roll it in the box that you made for me so it's a little constrained. But uh, I got a two minute timer set here, and I'm going to tell you what you need to go find. You're going to have two minutes to find this item or the closest facsimile thereof. You're going to be competing against everybody at home um, that wants to chime in on the chat and uh, or put pictures on the Facebook page to show what they found. Um, we've got people that can monitor that. Uh, and then live on camera, you're going to be going up against Martin and Thad. And we're going to judge um, for some luck point. Uh, probably just one luck point, unless you really blow my mind. Uh, who's going to get this? Um, here we go. Challenge accepted. All right. <laughs> so. 
So, <laughs> okay. Um, you are all animal trainers, and I need a pony. And go now. Da. Well, why they're out, I guess I've got a little time just to chat with you. Um, if any of them does bring a live pony back, that's going to be worth more than just a few luck points. Thanks, Randy. Apparently, when Randy popped out, he screwed up all of our video feed. So for those of you at home, um, the timer just ran out and we are seeking a pony. And Rob came back first and almost in no time with his pony that's sitting right behind him there um, that you can see. That's Watson, uh, the canine pony. And um, so that's a living, breathing, four-legged quadruped of almost the right size. It's going to take something for you two. What do you got? We might have well, a guest win for the first time. What do you got, Martin? It's terrible. So first I rushed to the miniatures thinking surely there was a horse miniature, but that awesome wagon you built is pulled by an oxen. So yes, I indeed. had no horses. So then in a panic, I went with the dad joke and I ran upstairs to the pantry to look for macaroni because it rhymes <laughs> and I could not find macaroni. That's and the we don't have you right there. And we don't have bologna. And so as often happens in a crisis, I turned to my wife, Andrea, and she said, your shirt. Oh, oh look at you. So wow. th there you go. The gaming well honors night in that his was, youth. That was well played, sir. And that wasn't well, even set up. That was a legit. No, uh, no. nice. Actually, That's what Andrea. I should say is well played, Andrea. I know you're out there listening somewhere. <laughs> Sometimes it's just. It, it, it's the most obvious things right hmm. well okay what do we got so Ed? i have two options uh my first Ooh. one is going to fail because it's a fake version of rob's so <laughs> i mean that's yeah no i got this at yellowstone a couple summers ago um i'm bringing myself because i am a stallion <laughs> that's what my wife says anyway and uh yeah, I've so. talked to your wife. She doesn't say that. Hmm. <laughs> well, the best, best I got. This was um, that was enlightening. I'm just going to say that. So, Rob, you win. You are our nice. peasant for this week. I think you are our first guest winner. You are a peasant. You are an animal handler. I've seen Watson. He's very well behaved. Um, I can attest to the fact that you're a fine animal handler and uh just absolutely outstanding thank you so much for joining us congratulations well thanks fellas i appreciate it thanks right. rob lance lance has won this for two weeks in a row so thank you for wrestling the title away from him this guy he's ready to be a peasant all out oh no the title's still mine because i'm hosting tonight so i can't get it so for the, as far as you jamokes are concerned you know <laughs> i'll see you next week all right but nice job rob Oh, and Martin. Uh, Thanks, Rob. Um, I'm going to give this uh, luck token to Andrea. Um, <laughs> she can give it to you if she wants. She can put it in the chat whether you get it or not. If she if she's willing to share, then you can be bumped up because that was a fantastic plug. Um, leave it to the CEO to come up with that. Nice job, Andrea. Honey, I love you. We share everything. <laughs> Oh, well, thanks so much for Rob being here. That was a blast. Um, it's been an eventful uh, night for guests. I'll say that. And we had, wa hey, and we had uh, Watson too. We had a bonus guest. That was... Guys, now it is time to talk about some backstory issues. And one of the other fun projects that uh, a lot of people love, um, the only one of this kind that we've done so far uh, is... Bane of the Ancients, which is an MCC module that Martin wrote and that I have run, oh, I've run it dozens of times. Um, and uh, it's one of my favorite at the convention because I can usually, I get it right in there at four hours. It's just jam-packed. 
Martin, you want to tell us a little bit about how you came up with it and what it's all about? Yeah, I remember. So we had a pretty, I mean, I think we got the Mutant Crawl Classics rulebook pretty shortly after it came out. So there were not a lot of adventures out for it. And so we were kind of both as players at the table and as a company, we're sort of eager to come up with something for Mutant Crawl Classics that people could play. And I knew that I wanted to do some kind of quest story where what you thought you were looking for actually had as much chances of hurting you as helping you. And so, and of course, as we also really like to have stories with meaningful motivations. And so there was this idea that there was a zombie horde approaching your village with some kind of infection that had turned them into zombies. And so um, I think it was old twig legs is this old, uh, you know, sort of plantient kind of half mutated who says, oh yeah, I remember this happened once long ago and the, uh, someone came back with the bane of the ancients and that's what stopped, that's what stopped the zombies. And so the players go to this ancient temple to, uh, to find the bane of the ancients. And so, yeah, the, the, the idea came up because we really wanted to have an adventure. I wanted to have something for Mutant Crawl Classics. I wanted something that was sort of meaningful. People were racing against time. You have to get this cure and bring it back. Um, but the cure may not be what you think it is. And so I was in that, it was like zombie mode, uh, quest mode. And then when I got to the temple, originally I had the idea it was an agribusiness facility. Um, Monsato. I don't know what that means in real life, but Monsato is the ancient temple. And as the uh, as I was writing that out, then I decided, you know, there's a lot of room for office place humor here. And so there's kind of a, a kind of a gap in the middle where there's a lot of uh, exploring the, the labyrinth of a cubicle farm. I have had so much fun with different groups that r run through this um it it always is a huge hit um the uh the labyrinth search and all the random items and uh so i run twig legs as the matriarch of the village and i actually role play her way back when i was a little tiny sprout and they would tell me of the brain of the ancients and yeah so uh yeah twig legs lets people know what's going on but it's a great uh it's a great you could run it four or five hours bang 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 um and it's super fun so many good jokes the alt so spoiler there will be spoilers uh there's an altar um there's an altar inside of the temple that people love uh and there's some sarcophagi in the one room that are a big hit uh so much fun you know i'd be curious from our audience uh you know most of our audience is probably dcc people right uh that's kind of the main platform for goodman games but mcc is a little bit newer and uh, we we wanted to kind of uh be a part of that new kind of system here and it's been a lot of fun so i'm just curious if our audience have they been playing mcc what's it, what's their experience been what do they think of it I just backed and received a Kickstarter for an MCC compatible module from a third party publisher. I'm sorry, I don't remember the name, uh, but it's called Night at the Casino and I've read through it and I'm imp I really like it. It's very much like Bane. It's got a lot of over the top antics in it. So I'm gonna run you guys, I'm looking forward to a one shot for that. Um, but I just wanted to see what it was about. And I, I'm impressed so far. I haven't run it yet, but I've read it. And then I did see that on Kickstarter now, there's another MCC module or, or um, hell, uh, might be a world uh, accessory. So it might be more than one adventure. Uh, and it's, it's going like gangbusters. So I think there's an, I, I believe there's an appetite for more uh, MCC t uh, content out there for sure. A lot of old yep. Gamma World fans, Metamorphosis mm -hmm. Alpha fans, love that kind of like love that kind of vibe so i just want to chime in i see skunk works in the chat loves uh mcc so yeah i mean there there's a lot of fun it is um yeah it is it is it is you know uh get i wish i could get better pulling off the weird pa feeling of the game that i've run 
yeah, it's it is. There's some there's there is some fun uh, stuff in there. Um, and I don't know. Am I reading PA as Pennsylvania? I don't know, Skunk Quirks, if that's what you're if, if that's PA or if it's a reference I'm missing. Either is possible. Could be. Gentlemen, we are winding down this evening. Um, I believe Ma Thad, you're up to about 14 on that luck score you've been doing good this evening i think that's what i'm at yeah yeah i believe so martin um did your uh did nope. your little uh no she's, she's keep she's keeping it she typed it in the chat it's hers oh, so i love I'm at it hey, you go good in for here. her she See? earned it she's the bean counter she's the ceo that's the business mind right there she's tucking that luck point away for later which means, Martin, that you are at 13. Yep. So our lucky winner for this evening is Thad. Now the question is, can you both survive rolling the body for the first time? Let's see if we can go two for two and see if anyone can survive this show. I'm going to move my, I... my health pin to uh, yellow to indicate that I failed at the peasant challenge. But ah. I'm hoping to survive All right. here. All right. Well, I failed too. So, okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah. I'm we good. Two survivors, Whoa. finally. You guys are lively this evening. Two live ones. Let's get excellent green on that. Yeah. That's okay. fantastic. I'm just gonna say that since I didn't really have to participate, uh, nothing happened to me. So I live automatically and I am still the peasant champion of the actual regulars on the show. Although Swanson gets to be an animal trainer uh, this week as well. Any parting thoughts, gentlemen? We have a minute or two. Um, uh, just be sure to be sure to check out our Kickstarter and uh, check us out on uh, Facebook at hashtag uh, Honor Your Game. Yep. Or no, I'm sorry, at Honor Your Game. Okay. Uh, check out our website, GamingHonors.com. We've got some other cool products there. Yep, and then if you guys are Kickstarters, uh, you know, if you just type in on the search Gaming Honors, all the different Kickstarters will come up, but Chaos Before the Mast will definitely come up first. It's going gangbusters. We're so grateful for the support. Uh, yeah. It's a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, we're bowing out a little early this evening, not only because we have uh, the show following us up, but uh, we have a play test to finish, gentlemen, in about 15 minutes. That's so, right. Elena, thank you for everything. Thank you to Randy for stopping by. And thank you to Rob, our first guest contestant to actually win the Peasant Challenge. And I guess um, that's it for me, guys. I'd be signing off. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for our backers. Thanks for tuning in. See you next Cheers. time, everybody.